Welcome to the second part of Lecture 10, Organisational Structure and Control as part of MAN 301 Strategic Management. This objective looks at the links and the relationship between strategy and structure. We'll talk a little bit about the evolution of strategy and structure. And as an extension, there's also several videos that talk about different types of strategy and structure, particularly the evolution to functional structure from simple structure. The reason for putting this additional area, this additional links back to the evolution of structure and strategy is so it links back to earlier units you have done in your degree. So firms evolve over time. They grow over time. When they start, they often have a very simple structure. In fact, they may only have one manager look, that controls all the business decisions. But broadly, or historically, I should say, rather than broadly, firms have evolved in a fairly predict predictable way. They begin and they grow as their volume increases. They grow through geographic dispersion to different places in the world, different places in the country, different places in the state. They integrate vertically or horizontally. And we've talked about vertical and horizontal integration when we talked about corporate strategy. And in the past, you would have talked about vertical and horizontal integration in other units in your degree. They grow through product or business diversification product diversification and business diversification we talked about in corporate strategy and in cooperative strategy earlier in this course. You would have also talked about some of these things in your introductory marketing courses. Firms frequently change their structure as they grow in size and complexity because as they grow in size and complexity, they need a structure that matches the growth, the strategy that they have in place. So how do they grow? Firms tend to start with a simple structure where all the decisions are made um, by one or a small group of managers at the top across a broad range of areas. As their sales grow, they begin to get coordination and control problems. So they evolve their strategy from their structure from that simple stru structure to a functional structure with specialists across different areas. And as their sales grow and coordination control problems grow, they may in fact start to split their organization into the mul a multi-divisional structure. A multi-divisional structure is known as an M-form structure. A multi-divisional structure can reflect a range of different structural divisional types. And we're going to talk about some of those. But in this unit, in this course, ultimately we end up with a description of a multi-divisional structure that is based on the degree of diversification and therefore links back to either the business level strategy being followed or the corporate level strategy being followed, related, unrelated, related linked, unrelated, related constrained diversification. So the simplest structure is an organizational, is the, the simplest structure is the simple structure. It's an organizational form in which the owner and manager or a small group of owners and managers make a, all the major decisions directly, monitor all the activities. And while the, and the staff works as an extension of that manager's authority. Very little special, specialization of task, few rules, limited formalization. Simple structure is frequently used in firms implementing either a focused cost leadership strategy on a single business or a focused differentiation strategy on a single business. You see that type of structure in fashion designers that are built around one person's vision or in firms that are trying to reduce the costs consistently in one particular line and therefore the controlling interest, the approver is at the top about what expenditure or what changes can occur. 
So those firms commonly have one product line in a single geographical market. But as their organization grows, as it becomes more complex, managerial and structural ch changes occur. Owners and managers often lack the organizational skills or the specialist skills to manage complex specialized tasks across a range of areas. Now, before we go on any further, if we think a little bit about value chains and outsourcing, it is possible to outsource many decisions in an organization while still maintaining a simple structure. However, even when that's occurring, you start to see more complex structures arising. The more complex organizational forms, well, the first stage in a more complex organizational form is what's known as the functional structure. And as I mentioned, I've got a video description of a functional structure um, as an additional extension reading, uh, extension video as part of this. When we move beyond our simple structure, we end up with our next level, which is called the functional structure. A functional structure is a structure in which you have a CEO and a limited number of corporate staff that look after particular organizational areas, production, accounting, marketing, etc. Those organizational areas require specialist knowledge and experience, but the risk in a functional structure is you have a series of silos, so still the CEO is making the overall, or the small top management team is making the overall strategic decisions while production, accounting, marketing managers make functional decisions. The next level up in the evolution of organization is the multi-divisional or M-form structure. Multi-divisional or M-form structure is a series of operating divisions each that operate as a separate business or profit center with the top corporate delegate management delegating responsibilities for the day-to-day -day, or even sometimes more than just day-to-day -day operations and business unit strategy to the divisional managers. Now in the different types of diversification, the goals, the objectives, the controls on those business unit managers may be purely on the performance of their business unit in an unrelated diversified manner, purely on the performance of the strategic business unit with some contribution to the overall corporation and other divisions, which is the SBU form, or in other forms where there is high integration between the different parts of the organization, a related diversification corporate strategy. Three major benefits of the multi-divisional strategy over structure over the uh, multi-divisional structure over the other forms are corporate officers, the head office, the head, the senior management team are able to develop appropriate strategy and structural match. It facilitates better information processing, coordination and control in diversified units. And it improves resource allocation and stimulates managers in poorly performing divisions to seek ways to improve their performance. There is some debate whether strategy follows structure or structure follows strategy. The traditional view is structure should follow strategy. And I've given you a link with a short, small, short Audiotopia video that describes the evolution of multi-divisional firms and the relationship between stra strategy and structure with structure following strategy. However, as organizations, particularly organizations that have existed for a while, while already have a strategy, uh, sorry, have a structure, as structures and strategies evolve, they influence each other in the strategic direction of the organization. So watch the two videos that I've put up, one of which is this evolution of the M form, the other one is a description of functional strategy, which will be a good precursor to our next discussion on how we align business level strategy and how we use business level strategy and functional structure and how we use functional structure to align with 
the business level strategy. So how we bring those two things together.